you guys we're about to begin this section and I wanted to point out to you you know I'm actually gonna blow this up in the corner of my handheld you can see those words CAS and I wanted to mention to you right here like I said CAS I always recommend that you buy a CAS um, calculator at particularly the Inspire it's the you know so so far as I can tell the the best handheld that can do some extra features and that I like using those features in fact I've always used a CAS um, and and so um, a calculator that has computer algorithm software and uh, I, I like it sometimes I don't even know whether or not other calculators have the functionality that I'm about to show you so a TI-84 can find a derivative at a point and you would use n deriv but you might need to watch a different video because this this video won't help you if you have a TI-84 this video is designed specifically for the TI Inspire with the CAS, okay? So what I'm going to mention is that this calculator is allowed on the AP test, but what is not helpful is actually the CAS features. You don't need CAS features to be able to do problems on the AP exam. You could use any generic derivative at a point function. And so, um, what I'm about to show you is allowed on the AP exam. I think it's a very handy way of doing this work, but it differs a little bit from some of the notation that you'll see on the paper, which I'll, I'll show you as we move forward. To start, for example, I like to define a function uh, just because I think that it's the easiest way to, to do things on the Inspire. So here we go. I'm defining this function f of x and I'm going to use this control and that button right there and I'm going to type in that x is cubed and that I am adding to it 3 to the power of x and boom I now have that function and I'm supposed to create a derivative of that function at a point and so here under menu if I pick calculus and I pick ooh, sorry calculus I pick derivative at a point then it asks me, well, what value would you like to check out? And the question asked me to find the value of the derivative at 2. So I'm going to plug that in. And then look at what it gives me. It says, hey, ddx, you want to take the derivative of what? I'm saying I want to take it at f. And it also says, hey, that, that's a weird character. It's like half of the absolute value. Uh, that character is called the pipe in computer science. It comes from math. In math, we say evaluate this thing at what value? At x equals 2. Sorry, hold on. I'm scrolling around. I'm going to hit control and enter now because I wanted the decimal answer to this. And there you go. Now, just in case you wanted to know, it will give you the exact answer, and that's interesting too, but he asked for decimals, so I'm doing decimals. 21.887. So my answer is 21.887. Now, what are you going to write down? Because I just did a bunch of stuff on the calculator, and you're going to need to remember how to do it, right? So you might want to say define f of x colon equals and then you're going to put in the x cubed plus the 3 to the power of x then you're going to hit the menu button and I like to draw a box around it as in like that's a button and then I'm drawing an arrow to pick this menu choice which was calculus whoops I could spell calculus calculus and then after that I picked the next choice which derivative at a point and then here, the next thing it did was it did a d, d, x, and I typed in this f of x that I had defined, and I def decided to evaluate it at x equals 2. And if you're worried that you're going to forget what this character means, you might want to, you know, mention to yourself that this in calculus is called a pipe, as in pipe putting one value into another thing. And so the value of 2 was being put into the derivative function, which was evaluating f of x at 2. So we could say pipe or we could say evaluate at 2. Two, okay just so that you know what that symbol means so yay we did that it seemed actually quite easy and hopefully if you practice this a bunch more you'll find it to be quite simple I'm now going to go ahead on to the next problem and I notice that it says hey 
let's do a g of x oops and by the way we want to not only do we want to find the derivative at 2 which we had done for f of x now we want to do that for g of x the derivative i mean and we also want to find the derivative's value at 4 we're also going to actually graph that thing okay and there's a couple of reasons why so let's just practice the setting up g of x and so here's g of x and i want to define that thing because i have several things i want to do with it what button do i press to get that natural log it's that button right there but you have to hit the control first and then i'm doing my x squared and my minus a three and i have it defined and yay and then i wanted to evaluate that at two so look how lazy I'm going to be. I'm scrolling up and I'm hitting enter <laughs> and it gives me that line that I can work with and edit. I'm going to change that F into a G and now that line says, can you evaluate G of X at the derivative at two? And I say, yes, that is exactly what I want. I'm going to hit control and I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to get my decimal answer, which just happened to be a four. So let me write that down. I got a four. Um, notice that there's a little like exclamation point there and it says there's a warning. It says the domain of the result might be larger than the domain of the input. And we're going to about to talk about this. Okay. So I can go ahead and find the derivative here. I'm not worried about that because I know that this function's domain includes two. I'm allowed to evaluate the derivative at two because the original function's domain includes two. But we haven't talked about the domain, so let's let's talk about that. Hold on a second. I also wanted to evaluate it at four, and again, I already happen to know that I can evaluate it at four. So I just scrolled up, I hit enter, and then I changed that two to a four, and give me that decimal, please. What is that decimal? It is 0.615. Um, also, just in case you were wondering what the exact answer was, it was 8 over 13. So who knew that the fraction 8 over 13 was the decimal 0.615? Not me. I had no idea. 0.615, and I'm, I'm set for the AP exam. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the domain of this function because of that error. It's going to come up again when I graph the derivative. So that, that, that little exclamation point. If you look at the natural log of x squared minus three, I'm hoping that one of the things that you remember is that this function has a restricted domain in the sense that x squared minus three cannot ever be less than zero. I do not ever want this to be less than zero. So I'm gonna say that it needs to be greater than or equal to zero because it's allowed to be zero, but it's not allowed to be smaller than that. Why can't it be a negative number? Well, hopefully you remember natural logs. I can't take the natural log of a, a negative number. That's a restricted domain, okay? That's how natural logs get restricted. So if I add three to both sides, I end up finding out that x squared needs to be greater than or equal to three. And if I take the square root of both of those things, I say that x squared is greater than or equal to positive or negative three, which is, um, sorry, x is greater than or equal to the square root, positive square root of three or the negative square root of three. Oops, that's a split, right? So if I'm doing that in interval notation, I say that I start at negative infinity, I go up to negative square root of three, and that's a union with three going up to positive infinity. So now I know, remember, that uh, wait, square root of three, woo, that two is in my domain because two is bigger than the square root of three and four is in my domain because four is bigger than the square root of three. So I'm in this section of my domain right there and I'm allowed to use those input values. What I'm not allowed to use, for example, would be say zero. I'm not allowed to have x equal to zero. That's not in my domain. I'm not allowed to have x equal to one because one is less than the square root of three. Oh, uh, just in case you didn't know what the square root of three is, the square root of three is, let's do that, is uh, 1.732, okay? So I need all of my values to be either bigger than 1.732 or 
uh, less than negative 1.732. And this matters when I'm trying to actually graph this derivative. And so the calculator is telling me that it's unhappy, and I, I hear it, and I'm going to heed this warning from now on. If I try to make a new function that is the derivative, I'm going to define h of x to be the derivative of g of x. Take a look at that step there where I'm setting h of x equal to the derivative of g of x. Boom, it didn't give me any errors about domain. Okay, so it gave me an error when it was, you know, processing the, the input of a particular number, like, hey, check your input, and I checked my input and I know it's good, um, but it didn't give me an error with the graph. And here's the thing, if I hit control and then dock and I add a new graph, then I'm going to graph that guy, h of x, it also won't give me any errors here either. And so it's displaying a graph to me. And I won't lie, I've actually made this video a couple of times because I'm remembering what I did in class where in class right now, for various reasons, we're using Desmos instead of the Inspire. Desmos graph does not look the same. It's missing that pretty wiggly bit in the middle, right? And so I remember that from class and I was like, huh, that's interesting. This graph isn't the same graph. That nice, you know, uh, side, you know, sideways S bit in the middle is, uh, it's different. Well, why is that? That's because I'm, I'm going to mention, I've never been particularly uh, impressed with the programmers over there at Texas Instruments because I did define this function to be the derivative of another function and it, it ignored that. It didn't restrict that domain for me. Whereas the programmers over there at Desmos, boy, how do you look at that? They kept the original domain and that's how come that squiggly bit is missing. So if you are intending to use an Inspire, use it with caution, okay? And I'm gonna say then, I'm gonna draw it without that squiggly bit in the middle. I'm gonna say that my graph roughly looks like this and roughly looks like that and the piece which should be ignored is this piece right here, right? I'm not graphing that piece. I'm gonna leave it off. And I'm, I'm gonna say that I, I'm pretty sure my window settings were negative 10 to positive 10, positive 10, negative 10, and there you go. Now you can see that graph. And we just wanted you to know that the grapher uh, works, that you can graph, but with caution, okay? So now um, for number three then, it says if f of x was the absolute value of x, find f prime of zero. And I remember from a previous section of our book that we're not allowed to take the derivative at zero because remember that the graph looks like this and anytime you have a, a, a corner, right, which with this graph that happens at zero, the corner is not divisible I mean, sorry, is not, you can't find the derivative of it. it. Let me say that again. That with f of x equaling the absolute value of x, I'm not allowed to find the derivative at that corner. And that corner is because you can't decide what the slope is at a corner. It's like an infinite number of slopes. It turns out actually that the derivative is undefined there. So let's see what um, our beautiful calculator thinks of this problem. And I'm gonna say, just to double check it, so we've, we've used F, G, H, let's use K, and I'll say K of X is equal to, sorry, is defined as, not equal to, it is defined as um, the absolute value, oh, you know, I think there is an absolute value function, but just in case you wanted to know where it lives, it actually is right in here and it knows I wanted to pick it because I use that um, a lot. It's actually very pretty. Okay, so now I've defined that and then I want to do a DDX and I go into the menu button and I go into calculus and I go into derivative at a point and that point that I wanted to know about was zero and I'm going to throw in there that my K of X equals um, the absolute value of x, find that derivative for me, find that derivative at zero, and boom, it says the answer is positive negative one, but oopsie, that's not correct.
Okay, so we just we just wanted to give you a little bit of caution that these TI inspires they know that they're using they're being used on the AP exam. They deliberately decided to not program it to do this work for you. They that's that's the trick. Okay, is that you have to think think about a problem before you plug it in, and we know that the answer is undefined. Can't find derivative at x equals zero okay some calculators are unable to give a correct answer to this last problem make sure you understand the limitations of your calculator uh, calculator i have just shown you that now then we actually move on to a bunch of stuff where we don't need a calculator at all so yay let's just use our brains for a little while all right we'll get back to the calculator in a moment so i'm looking at this graph of sine of x and it says that, for example, four, could I estimate the slopes of the graph? And this is actually kind of like a perfect moment for me to make a little table. So I'm actually going to make a table out of these values because I just want to keep track of what I got for each slope as I think about what that slope is. So I'm going to call this x and m. Because remember, the derivative is the slope. And so when he asks me to estimate my slopes, what color should I use here? How about this hot pick? Okay, when I think about making an estimate of this slope right here, well, I would say that that's a 1. So I'm saying at negative 2 pi, I have a slope of 1. And if I look here, I'm going to say that's a slope of 0. And so I'll mark down a 0. How did I know that that was negative 3 pi over 2, by the way? If this is negative 2 and this is negative 1, then that is negative 1 and a half, right? Halfway between 1 and 2 is going to be negative 3 pi over 2. So then what? How about at negative pi? Oh, yeah, there you go. That's a slope of 1. Sorry, negative 1. Negative 1. And at pi over 2, remember, if this is 0 and this is 1 pi, then this has got to be half of a pi, a negative half of a pi. And what was that slope? Well, that slope was a 0, so that's kind of interesting. I had a slope of 0 twice. Here, I would say that the slope was 1. Here, I would say that the slope was 0. Oh, that's a 0 again. Here, that's a slope of negative 1. Notice how all these values are repeating. Um, here, there's a slope of 0, and here, there's a slope of 1. So negative 1, 0, and positive 1. And the fact that they repeat like this is really quite interesting, isn't it? In fact, if I graph all of those points, he says, plot the slope. So when x is negative 2 pi, I want to graph the value of 1. There's a teeny tiny little one right here. I hope you can see that, okay? When x is negative one and a half pi's, then I want to graph zero. And when I have negative pi, I want to graph negative one. I don't know what that came from. Um, then if I want to graph what's happening when x is negative pi over two, and when x is 0, and then when um, x is positive pi over 2, and then when x is pi, and then when x is 3 halves pi, and then when x is 2 pi. I am graphing 1, I'm graphing 0, I'm graphing negative 1, I'm graphing 0, I'm graphing 1, I'm graphing 0, I'm graphing negative 1. Do you see? If I try to connect this up, what function do you recognize this to be? Oh, this is cosine of x. Specifically, you might have memorized that guy, right? That it looks like this. So a lot of times when we, we throw the other half, right, the negative side on there, you don't recognize it. But if you look very carefully, you could see just that segment. That's the segment you're supposed to have memorized, right? Just like I have this segment of sine also memorized. So there you go. The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. 